81 mil carbon clinches in disc brake and rim brake. For time trial, triathlon, sprinting, a little bit of crits, these are the deepest dish we offer. And they're the wheels that almost have a bit of a hum when they go past you in a triathlon, like a TT disc wheel, nice and fast. Having such a deep dish wheel, so light and balanced with the bullet balance, really is a bit of you know fuzzy tingle time for the racers. Usually if you're in a deep dish wheel like this, you can't spin this bad boy up for ages. These are super lively, they speed up quick, they slow down quick, they corner quick, they don't deflect, they don't make noises, they don't stuff around, they're just a really good all around race wheel. To make sure that it's a elliptical shape as well, so the front half of the wheel is behaving similar to the back half of the wheel, the old V shapes in deep dish wheels used to cause a lot of problems with this half of the wheel effectively being a very thin area to thick, the opposite of what you want on a plane wing for example, but this area here was thick to thin which is what you do want. This blunt area here, it allows the wind to come around this side but to also make it around this side. That's the whole reason. You're actually losing a weeny bit of arrow on this side to gain a lot of arrow on this side. But especially that crossed wind balance, that push-pull effect and the lift on the front and the push down on the back is greatly reduced with this section here. We spent a lot of time developing this shape. You'll notice this shape has been pretty popular for a while. Like most companies getting this deep are around this shape. We made some improvements we thought would, would help, but the structure of the wheel is the main area where we noticed the biggest improvements. TT wheels are still in the realm of the rim brake, which is where I think they should stay. I will have a quick look at the disc brake uh, hub with you in a sec, but the rim brake hub here really allows some beautiful airflow around this side. There's not a lot of spokes on here, which are out in the wind. This side here, you can see this is the flatter side where you've got to push the spokes in and create room for the cassette. So that's not getting as much disturbance. But this side here, when you run a, a two, two to one wheel, you've got half as many spokes out here chopping up the wind and they're all radial, very thin little elliptical CX ray spokes here. You can see the hub shell itself isn't creating a lot of drag. It's very stiff. You don't get flex through here as I've said in my other videos. The flex comes from the axle the, the axle itself and the end caps most importantly. I use an aggressive thread to lock these end caps on. That way they can't start wiggling around and moving. If you use a slide on end cap that slides on, it can move slightly, especially after 3000 odd K or more. And then you end up with the littlest movement here, which equates to a lot of movement here. You don't get that with these. They'll stay very stiff, which is important in a TT bike because your under bottom bracket brakes can be an area of rub. Uh, and you do not want rubbing, you want free flowing, that's faster, and these will achieve that. We do have the disc brake hub available in these wheels, as you can see here. It's a center lock rotor with a 12 mil through axle front and rear for the decadence, and then the Caden model we also do in disc, which has all the variations. So if you have an older quick release TT bike, um, which is pretty rare, or a 15 mil front, which is pretty rare. Most TT bikes are new, they'll all be 12 mil through axle front and rear. This is the front rim brake hub of the 81. Uh, I'm showing you this just to show you how clean the airflow is through this section here. There's a lot of big oversized hub shells uh, that are unnecessary and cause a lot of drag through the middle of the wheel, which is a very important part to let the air flow through this section. The deflection doesn't come through the hub shell. Hub shells don't flex. End caps and axles flex. So this has got a very oversized axle, yet it has a, um, an aggressive thread as well where the axle joins to the end cap and there's no chance of movement, it gets locked in place. I never use things like a slide on end cap where that slides on after two or 3000 Ks, the, the slide on section starts to move slightly and that equates to a big movement here from a small movement there. So all avoidable stuff, yet you've still got a super slender, little lightweight hub there to let the air flow through it. Now I'm gonna pull up a diagram of the rim profile with exact measurements so you can see what's going on with the width, the internals, externals, depth, now that's just one part of, I suppose, the, uh, the design process is getting that rim profile right. Uh, the offset drilling in these is really critical too to make sure the line of the spoke and the nipple is kept straight to the flange and there's no bending of the, 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 the final thread on the spoke itself, which is one of the weakest points. So we keep that all straight and that rim profile has another diagram off it for the drill rig, which is all matched up. 
Okay, now we're going to do a live weighing of the wheels. The industry standard for weighing wheels is no rim tape, no skewers, no bullet balances, no cassette caps, no rotors, no nothing, effectively just the wheel. Uh, so that's how we'll be showing the exact weights comparably with how everyone else does it. The only difference being, um, I'm doing this live here to highlight the difference between claimed weights and real weights. Uh, a lot of wheels I weigh are anywhere from 50 to 150 grams over their claimed weights. 81 mil decadence carbon clinches in rim brake. Uh, we have, I didn't, oh, sorry, I didn't have a front one built, so I've just put all the componentry up here. So it's 1619 in total, minus the 40 for the rim tape and the two bullets, uh, so 70 in total, brings it down to 1550, 1549. <laughs> Decadence 81 clincher rear disc brake. I don't have any front, sorry, but the rear is coming in at 866. So minus 20 and 15, minus 35 brings it down to 830, which is a bit underweight because this is a disc brake wheel. It's supposed to be a bit heavier than the rim brake, uh, but it's coming in almost dead on even with it, which is, uh, which is pretty good. Caden clincher rear rim brake. Again, don't have a front wheel sold out at the moment. Lots of uh, triathlon going on currently. But the um, weight of this one, 972, minus, it doesn't have a bullet balance, so just minus the 20 for the rim tape, brings it down to 952, um, which is about 10 grams off the website weight, so super close. Uh, again, Caden wheels, same resin system, same carbon, same mold, only differences, no nipple patching around the rim, which 90%, 99% of wheels aren't anyway. Uh, still has a great hub, a Forge 6066 hub, which is sort of standard. So these wheels will be the same weight as, as most brands, even high-end brands. It's just the decadence ones are super light, so just two options for you. Tire sizes, I get asked a lot of questions on this. Uh, and the good thing about our wheels is you'll be able to get tires on and off very easily. I do the inner and outer diameters myself when I was creating the molds to make sure you're not going to be breaking levers or holding the boys up while they're waiting for you to fix a puncture. Uh, I've been commented, or multiple clients have commented to me how great they are to get tires on and off. These will fit any 700C tire. So whether you've got you know, 21 mil, 23 mil, 25, 28, 30, et cetera, et cetera, you can even fit a 29 mountain bike tire on this wheel with no problem because a 29 mountain bike tire is the same inner diameter as a 700C road wheel. You're not gonna do that. Just give you an example of how simple it is. Whatever tire you wanna use, go ahead and use it. Me personally, I run a 25 mil rear and a 23 mil front. The reason I do that is because a 25 mil rear in most clinches is actually a lot bigger. This is just a weenie bit over 28 mil and the front 23 is a weenie bit over 26 mil. So that's more than enough tire for me. I'm 95 kg and two meters tall uh, and that's what I'm running. I see some really big oversized tires out there um, and when you get to too big a tire, it will bulge. This here is not bulging, so that's a very big tire and you'll see here how beautiful that sits within the profile. It's nice and narrow. so what you've got on the leading edge, you've got the air flowing around seamlessly. There's no big bulge and lump, and the interface is clean. That's the critical factor in keeping a wheel aero, is matching it to the tire. Then on the rear half of the wheel, you've got the wind flowing over here, not separating, not getting angry, and not bulging and flying off. I've said it many times before, if you looked out at your plane wing and there was a massive bulge hanging out the, the end of the plane wing, that thing ain't flying anywhere. Same as using a big 30 mil or a 28 mil tire. If you're gonna use them, yes, use it on your rear, but you don't need it on your front. The rear wheel is the one that cops all the beating. So best advantage all round, I think, is a 23 front, 25 rear, or if you've got really shitty roads or you're off road, a 25, 28 or 25, 27 is, is still really cool. Okay, valve stem lengths for, and write this down please, because uh, you'll need to know what valve stems to order. So the 25 mil clincher, get the smallest valve stem length available. I've seen 38s and 40s. If you can only find 48, that's fine. I mean, you can put an 80 on the thing, but it's not gonna balance to the bullet head, especially in the larger sizes. Each valve 
each size, should I say, as the valve gets longer, has a heavier bullet head to compensate it and to keep the flywheel effect of the wheel and stop death wobbles. So for the 38 mil, you need a 48 mil or 50 mil valve stem length. They're the two sizes that are generally available for the 38 mil clincher. For the 49 mil clincher, you need a 60 mil valve stem length. For the 59 mil, you need an 80 mil valve stem length. And for the 81 mil, you need an 80 mil or a 60 mil valve stem length. And I'll send you two different extenders. So you have a choice uh, for a couple of different options. They're free. That's the only wheel extenders come from besides the tubbies. So the clinches, you don't need extenders, which is great. You wanna avoid them if you can but I've got a custom extender for the 81, which is really good. The other thing uh, with my wheel is because it's a filament wound cl clincher hook, it's super smooth inside the clincher hook itself. There's nothing, no rough coarse material like you get on a mold butt forum rim where you get variation and you know voids and sharp pieces inside. A very large company at the moment is not allowing lightweight uh, race tires with thin sidewalls because effectively, they haven't stated this, but this is why it's happening, the clincher hook is scissoring in to the light sidewall and then blowing out the sidewall after a, a few hundred Ks. Um, you know, you can literally lick the inside of my, uh, my clincher hook. I've shown clients this because it's so smooth and you won't have any scissoring of the sidewall. So you can run beautiful lightweight race tires without having the fear of any, any failures on the side. I personally run just lightweight butyl tubes. If you want to run, you can run any tube you want, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, latex is good, but not much better than butyl and it's expensive and it's a bit more fragile and you need to keep pumping it up. So a nice set of, you know, light uh, race tires with a lightweight butyl tube will just roll superbly. So these are the bullets that I hand weld. You can see they're all beautifully rounded on the back there. So there's no chance of any issues because they sit up under the rim tape. They have a little sticker on the back of them, then the rim tape as well. And so there's no chance of any issues with your tube or any, any problems on the back of them. That stops there. The reason I use bullets is they're the perfect size to fit in here and they're separate weights. And it's cool as hell to have bullets in your wheel making you go quicker. Uh, so that's the 38, that's the 49, that's the 59, that's the 81. And I got a little tickler pistol bullet head for the 81s, depending if they need a little bit more balance or not, just to keep them really special. Because the 81s you want super balanced for TT to keep that flywheel and speed effect going. Now, a lot of new drive systems, group sets, 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe even 13 speed, etc. Uh, are always changing and we are on top of that and will always make drivers to fit every wheel. Caden or Decadence has every single driver type there is. I get asked this question a lot. You will not be superseded. We're not in the game of making things like a lot of other wheel companies have done in the past where you can't swap out to the new standard. That was from say 10 speed to 11 speed. You had to buy a whole new wheel. They didn't make a component to cross over. Um, we will not be superseding for sales. We will be making sure that all current and existing models are available with any new drivers. Probably the newest one to come out will be the Shimano Spline system. Um, that will probably end up being a 12 speed. At Touchwood, there's no, not too much talk of more 13 speed. Uh, we don't need an extra gear for marketing. We just uh, hopefully will stick with this, but if there is 13, we'll do that as well. Now I hope you can see this. The reason I'm showing you this rim profile cut with some rim tape in it is because I worked really hard to avoid ghost punctures. Effectively, if rim tape is too narrow, it can slide in the rim exposing one of the assembly holes and then the tube can creep into it and explode internally. People will think they're getting punctures all the time. I had a guy come in just last week about this and then I blew up one of the tubes that he'd just punctured on and I saw that the puncture was on the inside of the tube, not the outside, and that let me know straight away he was getting an internal puncture from bad rim tape. So this does two things. The rim tape is nice and wide. It can't slop around in the rim and expose a hole. It also stops the tube from creeping under the tire bead. I meaningfully make my clincher hooks. I designed this whole hook system myself because I've seen lots of other wheels where the tire bead sits proud and high in here and there's a gap under it and then the tube creeps under the tire. So when you hit a pothole, 
it pushes down on the tire and the tube sitting underneath it, hey presto, snake bite. With my tires, with my rim clincher hook should I say, you can't get the tube underneath the tire bead. The tire bead sits snug up here and then the rim tape so it's a nice soft area for the tube to be sitting on. Avoid ghost punctures, avoid snake bites. As far as disc brakes go on road bikes, uh, they've got very small, what I think is underpowered um, disc brake systems and they can generate a lot of heat, especially for a big guy like me. So I'm developing my own disc brake rotor that has a floating system, not a fixed system like this. Currently all road bike rotors are fixed system. Uh, I was speaking with Glenn Alton, three time superbike champ. And I used to do some motorbike racing as well. All their rotors have a floating system so the expansion joint can happen in between here, here, here and here. And it keeps the rotors from getting heat warp and chatter and noise, etc, etc. So I'll have that coming out very soon as well as some uh, heat dissipating brake pads with larger cooling fins on them. So watch out, it'll be cool. All Caden wheels have a weight limit to at least 110 kg and are tested well above that by myself and machine testing. The reason for that is this beautiful filament wound clincher hook here which holds the structure perfectly with no voids or air bubbles and 100% bonding in one piece the whole way around the rim. The second part of that is the nipple patching. You can see how thick this bit is here. This is not one of my rims. I'm just showing this as an example. So you can see it. Very thin nipple bed here. It's uh, almost as thin as mine where it is in between the spans let alone where this beautiful chunky bit where it needs to be the nipple going through the rim also no, zero voids hopefully you can see this on the focus here but there's voids around here and in here this is where you don't want them right on the braking surface which is where all the heat happens and you will get uh, delamination failure on that point which you will not get with the cadence. Uh, all the UCI test is is an impact test from a certain height going around the wheel hitting it in multiple points. Once you've achieved that you pass the UCI test. We keep going times 10, 15 before we have any yielding uh, let alone a small crack, no, no structural catastrophic failures. Uh, if you fail the test, if a piece falls out of the wheel effectively or you have a crack, a massive crack in the wheel, um, we've never done that, so passing all the tests. And yeah, there's no, there's no loss in getting a, a Caden wheel comparably to a decadence. It's just the cost of manufacturing difference in between the two is 150 for each wheel or 100 if you're in the US or 100 if you are in Euro. So how did Caden compare? Well, I've got a couple of competitors around my range. You've, you've probably had a, a good look at them if you're, if you're online. And the easiest way to answer that question is to just check the specs for yourself. Uh, almost every time they'll be narrower, uh, a lot heavier. One of my main competitors generally is about 200 plus grams uh, heavier than my wheels. They won't have nipple patching. They won't have the bullet balances. They won't have 3D Forge 7075 hubs. Uh, and they won't have the lemon next to the pie, and that is we do pay for import duty into countries. So we do delivery duty paid. Because usually if you order a set of wheels and they arrive, you can pay anywhere from sort of two, three, four hundred dollars on top of it to get it cleared by customs. So when you look at the type of wheels we're making, I mean, this thing is an absolute weapon just about to be released and the TT disc as well. Uh, the tubular version of the TT disc is 810 grams. The tubeless version of the TT disc is only 860 grams. And these are weighing in at about 850 for the tubeless version and about 700 for the tubular. So yeah, I don't see companies in my price range making wheels like this. We are an end-to-end -end wheel company with top-end race products that are affordable, service, three-year warranty. I think the choice is pretty easy, guys.